Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey. I'm glad that you are here because we are right in the gospel this week. We're getting into the the nuts and bolts, the practicals, the experience of what God has gifted us through Jesus, his son, overcoming sin. And so we do want to pray in Jesus name that, Father, we will come to understand our reality and to believe it because you have said it. And the moment we believe it because you've said it. That is when your spirit is now released and enabled to do it in us. So in Jesus, we pray and we believe, Lord. Amen. Amen. Overcoming sin, because in Romans chapter six, verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, when we are under grace, we are empowered. We are liberated. We are set free. And specifically today, what we want to remember is that because we have been set free, the first point that we've got to grasp is this. And that is that Romans teaches us that in Christ, sin has no dominion over us. And this message in Romans is totally consistent with the whole reason why Jesus came in the first place. See, in Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. There's no there's no bartering. There's no there's no negotiation in this in this statement. Sin has no power over us in Jesus Christ, in grace, because Romans 8, 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Note, he's speaking at something that is already accomplished because he recognizes Paul is teaching that we are already free from the penalty of sin, which is eternal death. We have been set free from this reality. And in fact, because we've been set free from the penalty of sin, now, now we're in a position to be constantly set free from the power of sin that is in this world. Even Satan himself, because the Bible says, speaking of Jesus's birth and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins, not in their sins, but from their sins. Jesus saving us from the penalty of sin and daily keeping us, saving us from the power of sin in anticipation that one day he will save us from the very presence of sin. Remember, we built on this yesterday and the words that we use to describe these experiences are justification that frees us from the penalty of sin, which is that's right. That's death, eternal death. We have been set free from this. Now, while we experience death in the flesh or temporal death, Jesus doesn't even call it death because every time he refers to that to a believer, that believer is sleeping in Christ one day to awake. One day to be resurrected. So in justification, we are free from the penalty of eternal death. And in sanctification, we are freed from the power of sin, daily walking and becoming more like Jesus, less like ourselves. Till that day comes when Jesus comes and he destroys sin and death itself. And we trade in these human natures for holy natures, these broken bodies for divine natures at the coming of Jesus Christ. So now if justification and sanctification and glorification have done these things, we are private property. We belong to the Lord. We belong to him by virtue of what he did on the cross. We become more like him by virtue of what he's done on the cross, sanctification. And we will one day be with him. By virtue of what he's done on the cross, that's glorification. We'll say it again because in justification, (laughs) I don't know if I can say that again. That was the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, letting us know that because of what he has done, because of what Jesus has accomplished, we are now his and forever his and forever will be his God's property. Now, as God's property, the reality is this in Christ. We are not under the condemnation or the penalty of the law. Remember that. Romans chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, that's Adam. We talked about that last week. And if you want to catch that study on the two Adams, go back and listen to that. But by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. 
given to us. And by virtue of being born, we are or we did not sin as Adam or like Adam did, but we sinned in Adam because we were and are his sons and daughters. And so just like we were condemned by virtue of of sinning in Adam, not like Adam, but again, given the fallen nature of Adam, even so now by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as I was like, 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 man, as I was in Adam and when he fell, therefore I am condemned. Christ, the second Adam, all of us were in him. That's why legally we have been justified, but we didn't do it. Jesus did it. And in Christ, my debt's been paid. Therefore, I can receive the free gift of eternal and justified life. I know that's a lot to unpack. But like I said, if you didn't hear last week, you got to go back to last week. But if we're on the same page, this lets us know that if Jesus did all of this before faith came, we were kept under the law, Galatians says. Shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. And the keynote of this verse is that were kept under the law. We are free from the fear of eternal death. We are free from the fear of being separated from God and from our loved ones forever because of what Jesus has accomplished on the Christ. Therefore, that's why there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is the good news. We have been set free. We have been liberated and we now have an opportunity to be set free and set free to obey. Because in Christ, being freed from the penalty of sin, we are now freed to obey over the power of sin. Say it again. In Christ, we're freed from the penalty of sin. And now we are free to the power over sin, the power to be able to live now as our redeemer. See, John five, six says when Jesus saw him lie, that means lying down this man at the pool of Bethesda and, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. I think it was 38 years. Jesus says to him, "Wilt thou be made whole. The impotent man answered him, saying, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. So here we go. Justification. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And when? Immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath day. Now that's justification. And now look at here. Look at Jesus teaching. And he that was healed wist not who it was. He didn't know who Jesus' name was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away and a multitude being in that place, he couldn't find him. So afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said to him, look, I've, I've, given you, I've given you a lot of gifts today. I've justified you. I have gotten you up out of that bed by no virtue of what you said, but because I said you were able to and you believed. Now behold, look, you are made whole. You are justified. Now let's be sanctified. Sin no more. Lest the worst thing come unto be. Jesus told him on one hand, get up. That's justification. Get up. By virtue of what Jesus did on the cross, get up. And after that now, Jesus says, let's sin no more. In other words, now that you've gotten up, walk with me. Follow me. Stay with me. I picked you up to carry you. Now stay with me. That's sanctification. Even over here in John, later on a few chapters, when he was dealing with the woman caught in adultery, Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said to her, woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? There he is saying, I freed you from condemnation. And just like she was freed, we've all been freed by virtue of what he's done on the cross. And now she chooses to believe it. And when she says, nobody can condemn me, Lord, because you have redeemed me. You've justified me. And what does Jesus say to her? Neither do I condemn thee. Justification. Go and sin no more. Sanctification. I don't condemn you. Now walk with me. 
When we've been set free from sin, it sets us free to obey. Because when this woman was caught, when we have been caught, when we are condemned by our violation of the law, Jesus steps in. And not only does he pay for the ticket, but not 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 even like an attorney, because an attorney will get you they'll get you off of your charge. But Jesus then will say, now we're not leaving this courtroom apart. Now let's leave the courtroom. You're not condemned. Let's live the rest of our lives together. Let's live. Let's walk together. This is the life of power over sin because it's a life in and with Jesus Christ. This is our promise. This is the possibility. And this is now the experience that we have daily in light of what Jesus has already done on that cross. I hope it's coming together in our minds to realize the balance, because in realizing this balance, these words become true. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You have been freed from the penalty of sin and now daily walk with me. Let my spirit live in you and by my spirit become more like me, less like you. This is the grace of God. So until tomorrow, let's all remember that in Jesus, change is good.